Okay, so now we're going to talk about infinite limits, and I'd like us to take a look at some graphs of functions. So here we have the graph of f of x equals 3 over x minus 4, and it looks like there's a vertical axis going through at x equals 4. Over here we have the graph of f of x equals 1 over 2 minus x, and here we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And here we have the graph of 2 over x minus 3 squared, and we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, and finally negative 3 over x plus 2 squared, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. So what's the common thread of all these graphs? Well, we have vertical asymptotes everywhere that will make the denominator zero of each function. So if I say that x minus 4 equals zero, then x equals 4, guess what? That's our vertical asymptote. Over here, 2 minus x equals zero, that means 2 equals x, which is our vertical asymptote for this one. So. What happens with these rational functions is that you never want the denominator to equal zero, and so that is going to tell you what your domain is, and wherever you have an x value that makes the denominator equal to zero, you're going to put a vertical asymptote. So this is the fancy way of saying it, um, and basically it says uh, if f of c is not equal to zero, so that means that this is not equal to zero, and g of c is equal to zero, then you've got a vertical asymptote at x equals c. So let's do an example. Determine all the vertical asymptotes of this function. Well, to do that, we want to make sure that everything is factored as much as possible. And in the denominator, I can factor that. I can't factor the numerator, so nothing's going to cancel. So it looks to me like I've got two vertical asymptotes. vertical asymptotes at x equal positive 1, because that would make that factor 0, and x equals negative 1. Okay, now sometimes you want to know if you're going toward positive infinity or negative infinity, because you'll notice that right here, this is going to positive infinity. So we would say that the limit as x approaches 4 from the right of f of x equals positive infinity. But over here, we're going to negative infinity. So we would say the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of f of x equals negative infinity. Now let's look at this one. It seems to be the case that as x approaches 3 from the left of f of x, we're going to positive infinity, and the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of f of x also equals positive infinity, because we're going up in both cases from the left and the right. Now just because we say the limit equals infinity does not mean the limit exists, because remember that infinity is not a number. So how could I tell which way we're going on this example without graphing it? Well, once again, let's factor it. And that's the difference of two squares. OK. And let's pick a number that's to the left of 5, say 4. So let's plug in 4, and I'm going to get 1 over 4 minus 5 times 4 plus 5, which is 1 over a negative factor times a positive factor. And if I multiply that together, I will get a negative result. So that means that this is approaching negative infinity. If I'd like to know what the limit is as I'm approaching from the right, Well, let's pick a number that's just to the right of 5, like 6. 
So I go 1 over 6 minus 5 times 6 plus 5. And here, I have two positive factors being multiplied. So that's going to end up being a positive result. So this limit is equal to positive infinity. And that's pretty much it for infinite limits.